We all heard the sister say that she would not date a bus driver unless the bus driver owned the bus company. I got an opinion about that. I want to share it with you. Hang with me. We could put 100,000 more police officers in every city. We could spend trillions of dollars in these cities, and it would have no effect, no long-lasting effect on many of the conditions that we see. You know why? You first got to defeat the principality. You first got to defeat the rulers of the darkness of this world. Now, again, they're already defeated, but we, the church, must learn how to exercise authority over those principalities. And then, only then, can we release and free the black men that they hold captive. All right, so the sister said, Sister Ebony K. Williams said in an interview with Ayanna Van Zant that she would not date a bus driver unless the bus driver owned the bus company. So let me say up front that the sister got the right to have her preference, who she wants, who she wants to date, what her requirements are. She has the right to that. I am not going to try to shame this sister. I'm not going to throw any shade at her. If that's what she wants, I get it. In fact, I can understand somewhat what she was trying to say. She just didn't say it in the right way. She just sort of spoke her answer without qualifying it. But unfortunately, even when she did have the opportunity to explain herself, she doubled down. And in a subsequent interview, she still didn't, to me, explain what she was trying to say. Or she said what she said, and she said what she said. I don't know. But first of all, let me say to all the bus drivers, thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for driving the bus. Thank you for driving the taxi. Thank you for driving the, the train. Thank you for driving the subway. Thank you for driving Uber. Thank you for whatever you drive, the 18-wheeler tractor trucks. Thank you for driving because... The truth of the matter is, if you don't do what you do, our country cannot operate. So you're important. And she didn't say that bus drivers were not important. She didn't say that. In fact, I looked at her Wikipedia page, and it says that her mother was a bus driver. So I don't want to read into what she said. She didn't say that bus drivers were unimportant. But to say that she wouldn't date a bus driver unless he owned a bus made people feel some sort of way about that. And, and it's filled with inferences that she didn't really explain or she doubled down on. But at any event, again, thank you to the bus drivers. And not just to the bus drivers, but everyone in our country who are providing manual labor, who are waitresses. Just yesterday, I went to a restaurant, picked up a curbside order. I had my waitress to go back inside a couple of times to get a couple of things that I wanted. And I made sure that I tipped her well because I appreciate her. And again, I'm not saying that Ebony Williams doesn't appreciate bus drivers or waitresses or what have you. I'm not saying that. But I just know in my heart that the work that folks do driving the bus, waiters, police officers, teachers, firemen, you know, folks who don't make a whole lot of money doing what they're doing, but they are essential workers. I appreciate those folks. And the reason I do is because I come from those folks, just like Miss Williams. I come from those folks. My father was a laborer all his life, had a third grade education. He never made more than $10 an hour his entire life. But he raised four children and he raised me and I wasn't even his biological child. And he treated me just like I was one of his, one of his biological children. He was a hard working man had perfect credit, kept his word. He was a good man, a good man. 
And again, my mother did not work. She quit working when I was a kid and she never went back to work because my father took his seven, eight, nine dollar an hour jobs and took care of all of us. So that's who I that's where I came from. I, I came from the person who does the manual labor, who does the backbreaking work, who works the long shifts, who work, you know, second and third shift. And and as a matter of fact, so did I. Right? I worked in fast food restaurants. I've worked in uh, one job I had was in a chicken plant uh, where I would shovel ice all night long in a chicken plant, right? I also worked out in fields. I worked in tobacco fields growing up uh, in the country where I'm from. I'm from North Carolina, and there was a lot of tobacco farming that used to go on there, and I was out in those fields. So, again, I appreciate the hard-working people who make this country tick. And I just wanted to say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep your head up. Don't let what someone says cause you to feel like you're no one. You are someone. You are very, very important in our country. And I know a lot of you are African-American men. And so I'm sure her comment hit you a certain way if you are a bus driver or a cab driver, whatever, but you enjoy your work. You put pride in your work. You're a good person. And I think that should be the types of things that you look for when you're thinking about dating someone. Uh, First and foremost, in my mind, they need to be a person of faith. They need to be a Christ follower, need to be a Christian, right? Right. Secondly, they need to have good character. Third, they need to be a person of integrity. Fourth, they need to treat their spouse or girlfriend kindly and nicely and gently and lovingly. It seems to me those kinds of things would be top of the list. And then, of course, yes, talk about what you want your boyfriend or husband to do financially. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting someone to make a certain level of income. Moreover, there's nothing wrong with wanting someone who is ambitious. And that is not to suggest that bus drivers are not ambitious. There are some bus drivers who are doing exactly what they want to do. Many who are doing it because they feel called to do it. Right? But there are others who feel like, hey, I want to own the bus company. So we cannot, while celebrating the bus driver, throw shade at the bus company owner either, right? What she said is so nuanced, and that's why I think she got the feedback she got because she didn't really explain what she was trying to say and when she had the opportunity, again, she doubled down. So, yes, Thank you to the bus driver. Thank you to the waitress. Thank you to the teacher, these folks who do these very, very important jobs, but don't make the money that other people make. I get it. And that's why I want to say thank you. Keep your head up. But then at the same time, if that's not what you want to do, if you have a, another vision for your life, then go for that as well. And here's why I'm trying to nuance this. Because I dropped out of high school in the 10th grade. I never made it beyond the 10th grade. No one thought I would be anyone. I mean, everyone thought that I was just a failure in life, right? 10th grade dropout. Today, by God's grace, I am first and foremost a minister of the gospel. And secondly, I am a licensed attorney. Now, when my wife met me, I was a broke college student. Broke, flat out broke. But she and I love to tell the story that while I was broke, 
I was walking around in suits with a briefcase because I had a vision. I knew where I wanted to go. She had already graduated college and was already moving up in the banking industry. And many people thought that she should not have given me the time of day. I mean, they looked down upon me because, again, I was a broke college student who had a rough upbringing. But they didn't know that I had ambition on the inside. God's hand was upon me. They didn't know that, didn't see that, but I thank God my wife saw that. She saw every bit of that. She saw the ambition. She saw that I wanted to make more of my life. She saw that I was an intelligent person. She saw that I was a a hustler, that I was going to go for it. She saw all of that. She looked beyond the holes in my shoes and the fact that I didn't even have a car when I met her. She saw beyond that, and she saw the real me. She saw the person on the inside. And if I had anything to say to Sister Ebony K. Williams, that's what I would say. You got to look at the inside of the person, not the outside. You know, the Bible tells us that man judges by the outside. You can't look at the outside. You got to look at the inside of the person. What's on the inside? What's percolating on the inside? What is this individual's potential? What is this individual's vision? And what are they doing to realize that potential and that vision? That's what one needs to look at. Sure, there are some situations where some guys got money, got a great career, own this or own that. They're well on their way. Unfortunately, that is not a lot of African-American men. African-American men have dealt with a barrage of racial oppression, a lot of systemic racism, a lot of things to try to hold us back from realizing our potential. And that's not to make excuses. It's just a fact. It's just the truth. And so many of us are still on the come up. I mean, we're still on the come up. You're going to find some African-American men who have been incarcerated. Some, yes, who've been to prison, who've been to jail, some with felony records, but are good men who need another chance, who need somebody to look beyond their faults, someone who can see the potential on the inside. Those are the things that I would say to Ebony K. Williams. Now, again, she has the right to say what she wants, and she may not have it in her heart to help somebody build or help somebody get to the next level in their life. She may want somebody, when she meet them, they got it all together. Well, that's going to limit her pool of black men, quite frankly. Yes, some of us are what I would call late bloomers. I said that I'm a licensed attorney, but I didn't go to law school until I was 39 years old. I had to grow up. I had to mature. I had to get things together. So I'm one of those late bloomers. And again, I just thank God for my wife. And that's another thing, again, I would say to Sister Ebony Williams. Sometimes a man needs a good woman. Not to take care of him, but to help him come up. That's what I needed. I needed the Lord first, and then the Lord sent me a good woman to walk with me, to encourage me, to hold me accountable, to push me, to love me. I needed that in order for me to get to the next level. What's the old saying? Behind every successful man, there's a good woman. So if a woman is looking for a man to have it all together when she meets him, then she may miss out on some really good men. Again, no one is advocating for women taking care of men. But sometimes it just takes some men longer to 
put it together. Good men on the inside. Good men, but just don't have the net worth that some sisters like Ebony Williams and others want. That doesn't mean that they are not dating material. That doesn't mean that they are not marriage material. It just means that they just need some help getting to the next level. That was my situation. So again, I would say to you brothers who are driving buses, brothers who are waiting tables, brothers who are working in construction, more power to you. And let me, let me just say this as I close. I had a plumber to fix something in my shower. That plumber made a lot of money off me, and he charged me about $200 for five minutes of work. That is a lot of money. And that's, I guess, some of what Ebony Williams is trying to say. If you're going to be a plumber, be the owner of the plumbing company. Or if you're going to be a bus driver, be the owner of the bus driver. And again, I'm not going to hate on her for that because I push and believe in business ownership, entrepreneurship as well. Absolutely. But man, sometimes some brothers just need some help getting there. And then there are some brothers who enjoy what they're doing and who would otherwise make a very, very good husband or boyfriend if a woman can overlook the fact that he is a blue-collar worker. Some women are not willing to do that. Fine, that's their loss. So I just wanted to say to you, blue-collar brothers, thank you so much for what you do. And keep doing what you're doing. And don't let anyone, anyone look down on you. I certainly don't. Because without you, without you, this country would not make it. So thank you again. Peace.